Regarding quality five, mm -hmm. what does a soul-based understanding that divine truth itself with all the power and knowledge that it has at its foundation will not compel a man to accept it against his will look like in my personal life? <laughs> well, again, uh, you know, what we do in our personal life and what we do in society is often very much reflected of what we do in our personal life. Yeah. So, so when we examine this question, we can see that it's going to affect a lot of society-based decisions as well as personal decisions. Yeah. When we honour the gift of free will, we allow people to make their own choices and decisions. And the only time that we would restrict a person's choices and decisions, and the restrictions would all have to occur harmonious with love, mm -hmm. is when the person chose to exercise their will in such a manner that would create other problems for other people. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if a person decided that they wanted to commit suicide, they're only affecting themselves, depending on how they do it. Yeah. You know, if they do it in a very messy way, then they're affecting some other people. Yeah. <laughs> if they do it very cleanly, they're only affecting themselves. Yeah. We would not try to force a person or to stop them from doing it unless there were certain conditions involved. Mm -hmm. One of those conditions might be that a person might be spirit influenced and therefore we would firstly want to remove the spirit influence from the person and once we had done that, then allow them to make their own choice yeah. uh, whether, about whether they would like to kill themselves or not. But if you look at what God does, God allows any person who wishes to suicide to suicide. Mm. God doesn't stop them. God tries to educate them. God tries to show them through lots of different means, both angelic and people on earth, mm -hmm. that it's not a wise choice to make. Mm -hmm. But in the end, God doesn't stop them from doing it. And the reason why is because it's an exercise of their will. They're allowed to make a choice that's out of harmony with love. And God's truth, which is don't do it mm. <laughs> because you're going to have a lot of pain if you do it, isn't forced upon them. Mm -hmm. They're allowed to make the choice. And God doesn't make rules about them making the choice. God allows them to do it. And this is what we need to understand is that even when a person is ready to harm themselves, God is not going to intervene. God's, God will try to help them, but God is not going to intervene. He's got, not going to forcefully stop them from harming themselves. So if we personalise <clears throat> that, not only can I not expect God to intervene if I'm doing something that's out of harmony with truth. That's personally harmful. That's personally harmful. Yes. Uh, or even harmful A and towards also, others. And also, can I, I cannot expect God to intervene with the consequences of such behaviour. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. Often what people do is they want to take the behaviour, but want God to intervene with the consequence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and God's yeah. not going to do either of those things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but neither will I compel others to accept truth about things. Exactly. Because I'll respect their free will. I would, so I wouldn't force them through some kind of act of violence or rage or something like that to believe what I believe. Mm. I would never choose to take such Or actions. to do what I think is loving. Or, or to do what I think is right. Or even what is right from God's perspective. Yes. Mm. To do what I know is right from God's perspective, I still wouldn't force them. Yeah. to do yeah. what is right from God's perspective. I might encourage them. I might educate them or attempt to. I might talk to them about the principles or matters involved, but I won't force them. Mm. I won't bully them. I won't control them or manipulate them through the withholding or the delivery of information that's false. I won't do any of those things in order to control their will. Yeah. You see this happening in religions a lot today where where there's this uh, constant making of laws to control people's will. So, so, for example, religion is not content with God's laws. So what they decide is they need to make a whole heap of other laws to support God's laws. Mm. <laughs> and so what they then do is finish up making a lot of man-made laws. For example, a law, you have to have a, a written certificate of marriage before you live together. Well, God doesn't have that law. God hasn't provided a written certificate of marriage to anybody in the universe who has ever become married. <laughs> God knows that it's love that binds the two people together. So when I attempt to force you to get a written certificate before I would acknowledge that you're in a partnership with another person, what I am doing is forcing my will upon you. Yeah. And when I'm doing that, I'm out of harmony with divine truth because God 
Knowing the full truth never does that. So you, not even knowing the truth, are doing it. You're doing it. So there's something wrong. And that's an indication that you don't have this kind of law or principle of understanding about the quality of divine truth in your soul. Mm -hmm. Okay, so some of the other things that we've listed here. Uh, if we have a soul-based understanding of this truth or this quality, mm -hmm. that um, we respect the free will of others, even when those others choose to harm us with their will. Yes. And this is a very interesting part of this in the sense that we understand and acknowledge that when we're living particularly here on earth, people are, uh, God is allowing people to make choices. And sometimes the people make choices to personally harm us. We would not revert to violence in retaliation to this harm. Now that is a very difficult thing for the majority of people on this planet to accept. Mm. God doesn't revert to violence in retaliation of harm. So we also need to not revert to violence in order to retaliate against personal harm. This is what it means to be Christ-like. And yet, if you look at the actions of the majority of religious faiths, <clears throat> they revert to harm whenever their personal life is attacked in any way. And even in our personal lives, we do that, don't we? We often do that. Yeah. If you look at, uh, we often revert, resort to resentful, and hateful activities as a result of harm perpetrated against us. So when somebody harms us, we then feel that we are justified in perpetrating violence towards that person in some way. When we do that, we are not understanding this principle of God's truth. God never does that. Yeah. We are not in harmony with this quality if we do it. Mm. Similarly, even if we just uh, withdraw from that person in a state of... Um, anger or rage. Anger or rage, mm. yeah. So yeah. when we withdraw from people, we may withdraw from people to, in order to protect ourselves from their particular you know, projections at us or in order to make a stance about the, that we believe their behaviour is unloving. So mm. those things would be acceptable. Mm. But if we're withdrawing from people in order to express our rage... Mm. We're already having rage go from ourselves to that person. Yeah. That is a violent attack. Yeah. That is out of harmony with this principle. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You see this happening a lot in marriages where women are withdrawing sexually from their partners, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is occurring because of rage. The woman is in a rage about sexual matters. She doesn't wish to address this particular emotion. And instead what she chooses to do is withdraw from the relationship sexually and emotionally. And, and, then, and, and she then thinks that's great. You know, like that she's more peaceful now. Yeah. No, she's not. <laughs> she has both compromised, but also she has not respected the will of her own will or the will of another in that mm. particular example. Mm. Because she, she doesn't see that if she withdraws, she is not allowing the will to be expressed and then working through the issues that cause her to want to reject it. Yeah. So in other words, she's not allowing her husband to express his love for her and, and not working through whether she really wants to be in the relationship or not. Mm. She's not allowing him to make a choice. She's not saying to him, I'm never going to have sex to you again, with you again. And then he could say, well, I'm never going to live with you again. You know what I mean? Yes. He's, when we withhold information that is important to other people, we are in fact affecting their will. Mm. If, if, if you need certain information in order to have an open and free and understanding relationship with me, it is, imper it, is, it is my imperative to give it. I must do it. Yeah. If, I, if I withhold that information, I am influencing your will. I am basically withholding information that you may make a different decision with if you knew it. And when I do that, I am not honouring this gift of free will. So I'm not understanding this basic principle of equality of divine truth in that place. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I understand that divine truth will not compel a man to accept it against his will. I don't attempt to manipulate others, even when I could easily do so, knowing their emotions. Mm -hmm. I do not force people to accept the truth, but rather respond to their desire to receive the truth. Mm -hmm. So can we maybe discuss some of these already? Sure. 
Let, let's look at the manipulation thing. Mm -hmm. We see this going on a lot in relationships where, where people get manipulated back and forth, back and forth, and, and the manip purpose of the manipulation is to get a result we want. Yeah. God doesn't do that. God just presents the truth and lets the person make up their own mind about how they're going to choose to use that truth. Yeah. God doesn't try to manipulate that. He tries to encourage loving behaviour through the laws, mm -hmm. but he doesn't force you into loving behaviour. He lets you make your own choices. And even every time we present a facade in a relationship, we are in effect manipulating that situation. Of course. We're saying, uh, here is Here's this is a me, false me. <laughs> but it's just a false version of me. Yeah. And I, there has to be a, something that I want from in return. That, in, in return from that. And which I'm is really attempting to manipulate the will of another yeah. rather than just present my real me. Yeah as I am right now, warts and all, as the saying goes, yeah. and let the person make up their own mind about whether they want to be with me or not. Yeah. The irony is the majority of people are very attracted to that yeah. and most people would be more willing to engage a relationship <laughs> under those circumstances, <laughs> yeah, which is true. the law that's very <laughs> true. Yeah. And the second one you mentioned was what? Uh, uh, I don't force people to accept truth, but I do respond to their desire to yes, receive Yes, this it. is very, very important. Yeah. Um, we often don't, uh, we don't understand one basic principle about truth, and that is that a person who doesn't have a desire to receive it in their heart will never receive it. They cannot, can they? They cannot. Yeah. God's truth is all heart-based truth, mm -hmm. and so unless you have a desire to receive it, you aren't going to receive it. So it's pointless giving it. <laughs> it's pointless giving the truth to a person who has no desire to receive it. And so this is a very important point. This is almost like attempting to force them to receive truth when they don't have a desire to have it. Mm. Mm. And it's a very beautiful thing when a heart does desire truth. Of course. It? Yeah. It's just so lovely then. Because when a heart's desiring truth, they can absorb as much truth as, you, as you're as you able to give. Yeah. That's and beautiful. actually this... this um, power and knowledge that divine truth has it as its foundation, which is a part of this quality that we're discussing, mm -hmm. has the ability to enter the soul of another person. And transform it completely. Yeah, mm. and that's very beautiful. It yeah. Is. yeah. Yeah. Okay, so understanding this quality, that divine truth is very powerful um, and doesn't compel people against its will, means that I never use truth mm -hmm. about others to alleviate my own addictions or gain personally. Mm. What we see happening a lot is people have a tendency to use truth or their knowledge of truth about other people in order to pull down other people and destroy their character or nature. This their self-esteem really, isn't it's it? It's really trying to pull down somebody's self-esteem and yeah. worth. Yeah. And the reality is that people who do this obviously have very poor self-worth mm. and they're attempting to pull down others' worth below their own. Um, unfortunately, they have a lot of soul-based degradation that occurs as a result of their actions. But doing so is actually an act that doesn't honour this divine truth, the quality of divine truth. And that is the quality of divine truth is that it never forces itself upon another person, but it's always truthful, but it never has a personal motivation of forcing somebody else to feel a certain thing. Yeah. It always has a personal motivation of attempting to help or heal a person. That's what God is constantly doing. That's the power of truth. It's the power of healing that occurs. That's why it's the truth that sets you free. Now, when we personally pull down other people, we tell either lies or the truth to pull down people, we are proving that we have a motivation, a manipulative motivation of harming another person purposefully. And when we have those kind of motivations, we are really attacking them. So we're really doing something by force. Mm. And this would not be a loving action. Mm. Mm. All right. I never manipulate others or events by withholding portions of truth. Yes, I think we've already we've discussed sort of covered that. that haven't yes. we? I never attempt to force a person into their emotions when they do not wish to feel emotional. Exactly. So this is the same kind of principle. I'm not trying to force the truth into a person emotionally when I know that they don't want to feel any emotion. What's the point of doing that? Why not just have an intellectual discussion of the truth if you feel like, like, you, like you wish to 
and see whether they're open to letting that soak into them emotionally at some point in their future, yeah. rather than trying to force them to be emotional as a result of what you're telling them. And this is, again, an attempt to manipulate their will. Mm. And every time we attempt to manipulate another person's will, we are out of harmony with God's truth. And, uh, and so you can see there's religions on the planet, there's politics on the planet, there's all sorts of you know, universal institutions on the planet, right? When I say universal, worldwide institutions on the planet. And all of these institutions, many of them are governed totally by this a desire to manipulate the will of others. Yeah. <laughs> and many of them would have to disappear under this particular principle. Yeah. And God doesn't do any of those things. But because God's laws are also immovable, you can't break them without there being consequence. Um, it's impossible to circumnavigate the law yeah. through, through force as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Thank you.